After completing this lesson, you'll be able to modify the appearance of a component, edit the appearance of specific faces on a component, change the way a component is displayed in the design window, and export an image of the component. In Autodesk Inventor, every component in an assembly has a physical material assigned to it, even if that material is generic. Each physical material has an appearance associated with it by default. If you change the component's material from the Quick Access Toolbar, it will update the appearance of that component. It will also update the physical properties, but that isn't the focus of this course. After seeing a quick example, let's change it to aluminum. When we do this, again the appearance updates, but we can also separate the appearance from the physical material. Next to where we change the material, we can use the pull down to change what the component looks like. There is also more than one library inside of Inventor. Switching to the Autodesk Material Library, the appearance overrides in this library map directly across multiple Autodesk products. I'll scroll down to Smooth Navy and select it as the new appearance. For this part, I'd like to make a few changes though. I'd like this to appear as a casting, so I want to remove the smoothness. I'll select the Appearance Editor and double click Smooth Navy. In the editor, I'll choose that I'd like a relief pattern and select the Alloy Sand 2 Bump Bitmap file. After clicking OK, we'll see that the bump map is applied to the component, but it doesn't look quite right. So let's make some modifications. Selecting the image again, we can go in and make modifications to the sample size, making it three in both height and width. That looks better. Then let's reduce the amount of bump and change the finish to a matte finish. This will change the look of the model and we'll call it good. We'll select OK and update it. Now, of course, not everything would be cast. Several surfaces on this component are machined. So we can select features, such as the extrusions for the bearings. We can select internal extrusions, the holes for the drain and the filler, and the holes for the bolts. As well as looking on the underside, we can select the chamfer. Just by holding control and selecting multiple features, then using the pull down, let's change the finish to a satin finish. We can also, using our selection filters, make sure that we're selecting faces and pick the main mating face and select the same satin finish. This gives us the appearance of a cast component with machine surfaces. Now let's switch to the View tab and change the visual style. We'll switch from Shaded with Edges to Realistic. This will enable ray tracing, and you'll see that not only has the lighting changed, but shadows are beginning to develop on our model. In the lower right, we can see ray tracing progress, and we can see that there are three different levels, draft, high, and we'll switch to low. This will keep the resources needed to update the view to a minimum. So as we move around the model or make changes, the view will update quickly. Now let's change the lighting style from light theme to old warehouse. Not only will the lighting on the model change, but you can see that the environment around it has changed as well. Image-based lighting uses actual images to set up the lighting and shadows on the model. In some cases, you might like to use the image that's creating the lighting in your design window. Let's change to Empty Lab. This is an environment that's better sized for smaller components. As we look around, we can see that there are direct light sources in the ceiling 
as well as ambient light sources bouncing off of the brightly colored objects in the room. At the bottom of the Lighting Environments pull-down, we can go to Settings. In Settings, we can edit the scene by doing things like changing the rotation angle. If we zoom out, we'll see now our model is in a different position on the countertop. Going back into Settings, I can restore the angle, and I can turn off Display Scene Image. This will allow us to take advantage of the lighting from the scene but not have to see the image that's generating the lighting. Now that we have the lighting the way we want it, let's go ahead and save out an image to share with others. Under the File pull-down, we can go to Export, then Image. We can then choose the file format we want to use, and save the file. After a few moments, we can open up that file and see what it is that we're able to share with the world.